Let's work another example. Configuration testing is one of the best examples of the usefulness of all singles and all pairs testing. What you're testing is the compatibility of your program with the combinations of these different devices. So here are six variables. What type of operating system, what type of printer, how much memory, what processor, what graphics speed, and how many hard drives. Every test includes a setting for every variable. So with six variables, all n tuples means all six tuples. The example includes three values for each variable. So all six tuples would include three by three by three by three by three by three, 729 possible combinations. That's too many tests to run. Here's a general process for planning a configuration test. Start by selecting the variables you're going to test together. This example included six variables. Next, select a few values of each variable. This example selected three values for each variable. Many more than that, it's going to be crazy to test. Then I want to create a combination chart. When I create a chart by hand, I assign single character abbreviations for each value of each variable. Makes it easy for me to read the chart as I create it. Here are the abbreviations. I use single digits. So if a variable has five values, I use one, two, three, four, five. Using the same abbreviations whenever I create combination charts makes it easier for me to spot and recognize patterns. The next steps to decide what coverage criterion to use. I'm going to start with all singles. Each variable has three values, so you can cover all the values of all the variables in three tests. Building an all pairs table takes more work. I do it incrementally. I pair up two variables, then I add a third, and then I add a fourth, until I run out of variables. To build the table, I start with the variable that has the most values to test. But in this example, all the variables have the same number, three values. So the order that I analyze the variables won't matter. So let's go on to build the table. The table has seven columns. The first column just labels the tests. The next six are for the six variables. I start by filling in tests for the first two variables. The operating system values are abbreviated one, two, three, like the abbreviations for all the other variables. So I've shown all the pairs on this chart. When I say all the pairs are there, I mean you've got a one with a one, a one with a two, a one with a three, a two with a one, a two with a two, and a two with a three, and a three with a one, and a three with a two, and a three with a three. Every possible value for the first variable is paired with all of the possible values of the second variable, all pairs. Now add the third variable, the amount of memory. Start by checking the first column and the third column, operating system checked with memory. For this to be all pairs, there has to be a test of operating system one with memory one, one with two, one with three, an operating system two with a one, a two with a two, a two with a three, and a three with a one, a three with a two, and a three with a three. Those are there. So now check the second column with the third. There has to be a printer one with a memory one, a printer one with a memory two, a one with a three, a two with a one, a two with a two, a two with a three, a three with a one, a three with a two, and a three with a three. Now add the fourth variable, the processor. So we check the operating system with the processor first. That's OS1 with processor 1, 2, and 3, OS2 with processor 1, 2, and 3, and OS3 with processor 1, 2, and 3. Then we check the printer with the processor, 1 with 1, 2, and 3, 2 with 1, 2, and 3, and 3 with 1, 2, and 3. Finally, check the memory with the processor, 1 with 1, 2, and 3, 2 with 1, 2, and 3, and 3 with 1, 2, and 3. At this point, you have all pairs coverage for the first four variables. Adding a fifth variable is a little more difficult. Start by checking operating system and graphics. That works. You have the ones with one, two, and three, the twos with one, two, and three, and the threes with one, two, and three. So far, so good. Checking printers with graphics is a little less successful. There is a one with a one, there's another one with a one, and there's a one with a two. There's no pair with a printer one and a graphics three. To get that pair, we need another test. I put it into row 10. There are pairs for two with one, two with two, and two with three. Those are fine. But then for three, we've got pairs with three and three, three and two, but not three and one. For printer three and graphics one, I need test 11. Now check memory against graphics. There's a one with a one, a one with a two, but no one with a three. It's easy to fit that pair into row 10. Just set the value for memory to one. For memory two, there's a two with a one, a two with a two, and a two with a three. For memory three, there's a three with a three, a three with a two, but not a three with a one. So add the three into test 11. Finally, I check the processor against graphics. There's a one with a one, two ones with threes, but no one with a two. That becomes test 12. There's a two with a two, a two with a two, and a two with a two. 
Oh well. I put a 2 into row 10 for a pairing of 2 with 3, and a 2 into row 11 to pair 2 with 1. There are pairs of 3 with 3 and 3 with 1. I create test 13 for the 3 with the 2. And here's how I add the sixth variable. I actually suspect that I could have fit these six variables into 12 or 13 tests, but 14 is a lot less than 729, and that's what we started with. Let's work another example. This example is from OpenOffice Impress. What variables are involved when you add a table to a slide? Here's my overview of a process for planning a combination test. At this point, you're selecting the group of variables. So far, my list includes the number of rows and the height of the rows, the number of columns and the width of the columns. What other variables should I add in this combination? If you're going to cram a lot of cells onto a slide, that won't leave very much space for the contents of the cell. Border style can reduce that amount of space further. What goes inside the table cells are letters and numbers, so the typeface you use is relevant, as is the size of the letters. So here are variables and some values to test with. I mentioned earlier that I prefer to use single digits as abbreviations for variables values. The variables are all independent, so the labels don't matter. Nothing affects anything anyway. Some other people prefer abbreviations that are more closely tied to the meaning of the thing abbreviated. So in this example, I'll show those. Personally, I think it makes the chart simpler if I ignore the meaning of the variables and just create the combinations. This chart shows the other way. You need to discover your own preferences. In this case, the variables have either two or three values. Always start with the variables with the most values. Here's the third variable. When you add a column, check that you pair up every value of the new variable with every value of the other variables. Check the row height with the border, then check the column width with the border. Here's the fourth variable. To add the fifth variable, you'll need some more rows. It gets easier from here because the remaining variables have only two values. As you can see, it's much easier to fit them in without adding any more tests.